police are not providing a service that I want any part of. I feel much safer if they weren't around. Regarding the lockdown of Friday the 13th, Chief Willard stated publicly that we were definitely infringing on their life and we understand how difficult it is. As residents of the city, we ask that a full public inquiry be held into the legality of the shelter-in-place order and the actions of the police on the streets of Manchester where people's Fourth Amendment rights were violated. We ask that a public report be issued by the AG's office which shall include the following information. What law enforcement agencies were involved? What federal agencies were involved and under what color of law or authority? What caliber of firearms were discharged at each of the sites and how many shots were fired? What caliber of firearms caused the officers non-lethal injuries? What did this cost and who is paying for it? But most importantly, we demand a full explanation of the delay between the time the suspect was in custody, which was before the MPD letter was issued, and when the lockdown was lifted more than five hours later. Explain the delay. The AG's office should also issue a, issue a written memorandum to be distributed to all New Hampshire police departments that any lockdowns or shelter-in-place recommendations are voluntary and that residents will not be treated as criminals if they go about their lives. And such language must always be included when a shelter-in-place recommendation is made. Today is an opportunity to enhance the relationship between the MPD and the people they serve. Police militarization is on the rise nationwide, but it doesn't have to be like that here in New Hampshire. Here are some of the things we'd like to see more of. Let's de-escalate rather than escalate. Bring a pastor or a family member before you bring the SWAT team and the Bearcat. We want to see more community policing where officers are responsive to the inquiries from people addressing them instead of just ignoring them. I spoke to five police officers who had jumped out of three cars up at Butter My Biscuit. This was after the lockdown, and I was walking my dog, Nellie, and I called from across the street and asked, hey guys, what's going on? They all looked at me, they all pretended I wasn't there. I then said again, excuse me, can you tell me what's going on? I was told to walk my dog home immediately. We would also like to see a move towards more old-fashioned, more Mayberry, less Fallujah policing. Let's go back to peace officers. Let's not just have blind law enforcement. Crime is down. Violence against police is down. Uh, you can read an NPR report about that. Then why do we need this constant escalation and more tactical police operations on our streets? Remember, when you have a hammer, and a Bearcat, and a SWAT team, and tactical weapons and training, a granite hammer, if you will. Eventually, everything starts to look like a nail. In case you missed the point, you're the nail. <laughs> Let Manchester and New Hampshire be the shining example that shows the rest of the country a better, more peaceful, improved way of policing. Let's end this trend towards police militarization in our own backyards. Let's let freedom reign. I'm here as a parent as well. Um, my daughter was born 26 years ago here at CMC in Manchester. She's lived her whole life here. I've been here for 27 years. The night after the shooting that happened in the, in the wee hours, the next morning my daughter got up blissfully unaware of what had happened. And at 10 o'clock, before she had to go for her 11-hour shift where she works, she went to take her two dogs outside to go to the bathroom on 3rd Street. Multiple police officers were there and frightened her and yelled at her and told her that she had to go into her house. And she 
answered them and said, but I want to take my dogs out to the bathroom. They did not tell her it was for her safety and it was up to her, that it was something that she could choose to do or not do. This is five hours after the man that they knew who did it because he was identified by the police officer that was shot was in custody. Instead, what they told her loudly and forcefully was to get into her house. So she did. Her dogs didn't get to go to the bathroom, and that may not sound like a big deal, and it really isn't. The big deal is that the police exercised an authority against my child that they do not possess. They do not have the authority to declare martial law. They don't have the authority to clear the streets and keep people from going about their lives. I'm here because I don't want to see that drifted into. And I, I, I too worry about the police. I understand they have a hard job. I know people, there, there are dangerous situations out there. I, I've heard that the answer is that there was a, a, a weapon that was being, you know, looked for, that there was a weapon missing. How many weapons are missing in this city at any time? Are we going to let the police put us in lockdown whenever there's a, a weapon that's been reported as missing? I hope not. I hope that you'll, you know, carefully consider and tell the police we appreciate their service. We know they do a difficult job but they do not have the authority to order citizens of this state off the streets and into their houses. Only the governor can declare martial law. Thank you. Brittany Payne, I live at 364 Remond Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Also a parent, if you couldn't hear the one-year-old. Um, when I woke up at 6 a.m. on Friday, May 13th, I had messages from concerned family and friends nationwide. My home was apparently on lockdown. I could see empty police cars out of every window, some of them less than 20 yards from my home, with police officers standing outside of their cars holding rifles. <laughs> sometimes there was only one, sometimes a group of four or five, and I could hear multiple helicopters flying overhead. I was concerned to take my dogs out to use the bathroom. What would happen if one of them barked? Would a gun be trained on me? I did not take my one-year-old son to daycare. I did not go to work. What would happen if I took my car out of its parking spot? Would a gun be trained on us? This continued for hours. Roughly 30,000 were led to believe that there was an active threat, an active shooter, an active reason for the militarized police presence and tactics like shelter in place. I was scared for my family being surrounded by police. I was scared for my neighborhood being in active danger, and I was scared my boss wouldn't understand that I couldn't leave. For almost five hours, the Manchester Police Department knew there was not a threat in my neighborhood. My testimony is a demand for answers. Why was I confined in my home when the threat was in custody? Why were so many officers in my neighborhood when the threat was in custody? Why were the officers' guns drawn? Why were so many resources wasted to secure a neighborhood not in active danger? I would like answers to these questions, and I don't think that's unreasonable. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, I didn't actually prepare this part because I was outside um, trying to rally the community to come here to speak to you all about what in my experience, having grown up in South Africa, and your at name, least, your name and address, I'm sorry, Carly Garrick, and I live in Direct Court, Manchester, Westside. Um, I brought some photos that I would also like to pass around. I don't know if that's something that is allowed, but this is basically police action that has taken place in Manchester over the past couple of weeks. And I think it's important to see maybe the world the way we're seeing it. As I mentioned, having grown up in a police state in South Africa, um, I have seen this sort of escalation of militarization of police happen over time. We know this is a national trend that is happening nationwide, and I don't think it's something that we want to encourage or see more of in Manchester. Um, I met this morning with Chief Willard at the community coffee meetup, and I feel like we had a good conversation um, he stressed that these orders were voluntary 
And I think as a beginning point, then, that needs to be something that is clearly communicated to the community at large when something like this happens. Um, it's also important for the police officers to understand that people who choose to exercise their rights to move freely um, are not criminals and that they should be free to go about and do uh, things that free people do. I have spoken to uh, several legal scholars at various universities as well as the ACLU and the NHCLU. I believe that uh, there might be a class action suit that could arise from the situation that happened on May the 13th. And the irony here is that if that lawsuit were to prevail, uh, my property taxes would likely increase because ultimately taxpayers are held accountable when the police overstep their mark. And I think that's a really important thing for folks here to consider. Um, I would also like to see questions answered like other, some of the other testimony here, including which law enforcement agencies were involved, which federal agencies, according to Chief Willard during the press conference, were involved in the actions on that day. 30 seconds. For the federal agents, I would also like to know under what authority or color of law they were acting. Um, we also need a full explanation as regards the delay between the time the suspect was apprehended and the time that the community was informed that there was no, lo uh, no longer a danger. Finally, I ask that uh, we do an audit of the costs that were involved in this and we figure out who's going to pay for it and it better not come out of my taxes. Thank you. Laura Bennett. Laura Bennett. I live at 444 Dubuque Street on the west side. Um, I chose to speak a very last minute because this issue is very important to me. I really love living on the west side. It's a great neighborhood and its safety is very important to me. On Friday the 13th during the lockdown, however, I wasn't so much afraid of the suspect on the loose as I was at the heavily militarized police and SWAT teams and canines and helicopters patrolling my streets. If the suspect would come to my house, I could easily defend myself. I could shoot him and that would be okay. If a SWAT team demands to come into my home without a warrant, if I say no, I don't think I stand very good chances in that circumstance, and that concerns me. Whether it was ever officially called a state of emergency, the lockdown in essence was such, and I think that there's no, there's no real place for that. Free people should be allowed to move around freely. We shouldn't be ordered to stay in our homes. We shouldn't be so afraid that, that we have to stay in, in our homes. When, when states of emergency or lockdowns are ordered like this, it seems to me that it's nothing but an excuse to toss our civil liberties out the window, and that alarms me. I only moved to Manchester about a year ago. I'd really like to stay because I like it here. But that lockdown uh, in my neighborhood causes me to rethink if this is a place that I want to live, if the police department is allowed to take action such as that, overstepping their bounds severely. Um, so I would ask all of you to hold them accountable for their actions and not let this happen again. Thank you. I was in Manchester on Thursday evening, early Friday morning on the 13th, and the reason I felt it important to travel down to Manchester and speak to you today was because of the events that I personally uh, went through that, that morning. Uh, about 3 o'clock in the morning, myself and three friends um, went, we heard that there were police outside and that the bear cat was coming. and. We had no idea really what was going on, but we went around and we walked through the streets. We passed probably, uh, I would say four or five different uh, checkpoints where the police were set up at intersections and we were blocked off the streets. Not one had said anything to us about not being able to be on the streets, that we shouldn't be in the area. Nobody really even acknowledged our presence. We did come to uh, one intersection that we were asked to please move it along a couple blocks, which we complied. Uh, about two blocks after that, uh, we were about halfway down the road, and I want to say it was Rimmon, and this is all on video as well, so I can't remember the details, but it is videotaped. Uh, we were about halfway down the street 
when I would say six to eight officers uh, turned a floodlight on, pointed their rifles at me and my three friends, screamed at us to put our hands on our effing heads, turn around and walk backwards towards them. If we were to turn around, we were really afraid that we would have been shot. We identified ourselves as we walked. We are four citizens. We don't know what's going on. We've been walking around all night. We have about half an hour of video. It didn't matter. We were told to shut the F up, shut the F up, and also to other foul language. Now, I appreciate the position that these officers were in. They were they were in a go mode. And they and, and what what really struck me, aside from the fact that I had guns pointed at my head, was that when we finally did approach the officers, what I saw in their eyes was fear. And it was absolute fear. And these were young people that were put into a situation where they were essentially making an enemy out of the citizens uh, of, their, of, their, of, their, of their city. And I don't think it was intentional. I don't think any of these officers go to work with the intent of, you know, let's suppress people and let's, let's, let's oppress them. And, um, but that's what happened. And it was a very clear division line between the police that were in charge and everybody else who's potentially an enemy. That is not, that is not how you police a, police a town. That's how war mentality uh, begins, us versus them. Uh, in 2012, the ACLU posted a uh, very in-depth study uh, regarding this mentality and militarization, and I don't want to see that in New Hampshire. We probably, you know, can right have, uh, in my opinion, I'm biased, one of the best uh, places to live in the country, and I don't want to see my streets turn into a war zone, and that's what I saw. And I was afraid for my life that night because I realized these guys don't know what they're doing, they don't know how to handle it, they're doing the best they can, but they're afraid, and they had guns pointed at my head and fingers on the trigger. All it would have taken was for one person to jump. And um, I appreciate everybody here listening. I just really wanted to get that out there. Thank you. Uh, Randy Clemens, 77 Direct Court in Manchester. Um, I would like to know where this, where this ends. There's clearly no de-escalation happening. And I think the police are becoming quite skilled at double speak and saying one thing and doing another. And so when we bring these problems to them, the solution continually seems to be, we need more police, we need more money, we need more laws passed. It's just more, it's more, it's more, it builds up and it builds a house of cards. And so now we have people who aren't able to leave their homes, we have people who aren't able to drive home because we have these suspicionless DUI checkpoints. Uh, we have people who aren't able to possess a plant because someone has deemed it immoral. I see a police force that is growing increasingly at odds with the views of its, the people it's purporting to protect. And I don't see this going positively. I see us coming here with a problem, and I see the answer being more police, more training, more money, and it's coming out of our pockets. I got my tax bill today. It's not friendly. It's not nice at all, and I'm not getting anything that I'm enjoying for my services other than this beautiful, this beautiful state that we're in and my, and my great friends, but the police are not providing a service that I want any part of. I feel much safer if they weren't around. So with that said, I would very clearly like to say that I don't want any of my